What's this? A letter for me. Welcome to another episode of Remember the Great Sports Through the Mail Thursdays. Today I'm going to share with you three returns that I recently got back in the mail. And I'm going to tell you about the players that signed autographs for me and give them a little profile. So let me go to the first one, which is postmarked from Phoenix, Arizona. And it is from former Oakland A slash San Francisco Giant slash Chicago Cub minor leaguer Bill Baith on 404. And I happen to have both of these minor league sets in my collection, so I decided to send both of those to him and a couple uh, common junk wax era cards. So let me tell you about Bill Baith and his career in baseball. Baith grew up in California where he attended high school. He was actually drafted by the Pirates in the 1980 draft, but instead uh, chose not to sign with them and instead was drafted the following year in 1981 out of Pepperdine University. Baith was immediately assigned to Double A of the Oakland A's affiliate where he appeared in 128 games where he posted a 281 batting average and hit 17 home runs. The following year in 83 he got promoted to Triple A where he appeared in 116 games where he also cracked 16 home runs. The next year he would start the year in Triple A but he would appear in just 84 games that season for the club. In 1985, he would come back and appear in 108 games in AAA, posting a 279 batting average and hitting six home runs. In 1986, he would get his break as he broke camp with the big club. And on April 12, 1986, Bill Baith made his major league debut at the age of 25 years old. He would spend just 39 games in the major leagues, posting a 184 batting average and would be demoted to AAA where he would appear in 40 games for the remainder of the season in 1986. Well, after the 86 season concluded, the A's decided to ship Bathe to the Chicago Cubs for a minor leaguer. Well, with the Cubs, Bathe would spend the 1987 and 88 season in AAA for the Iowa Cubs, never getting a call to go play in Wrigley. After the 88 season, he was granted his free agency, and he would go back to the west coast of native California and sign a contract with the San Francisco Giants. He would spend 76 games in AAA for the Giants, but would appear in 30 games for the Giants at the Major League Club in 1989 as a backup catcher. Well, this is where things get interesting for Bathe, because one of the most interesting things that happened to him was in his very first major league at bat in the World Series, Bathe hit a home run. So this is a highlight that is, you know, definitely a big highlight of his career. You know, in his very first bat in the 1989 World Series against his former club, the Oakland A's, Bathe went deep. And I'm going to link that down below because it's uh, definitely on YouTube, you know, on other channels. So you can check that out along with another video of an interview that Bave did that uh, somebody posted. Well after the 89 season he would uh, again be the backup primary catcher in 1994 the Giants. Uh, he would spend a little time in AAA for them but after the 1990 season ended Bave was released from his contract from the Giants. Bave decided to take his talents overseas and he signed with the Nippon Ham Fighters in 1991 and played there in 1991 and also the 1992 season. He does not have stats after 1990, so I'm assuming after his time in Japan he returned home to the United States and according to his Wikipedia page he relocated to Tucson and he actually worked for the Tucson Fire Department and as a paramedic. He perhaps is probably retired with his baseball pension and probably his public service pension as well. So thank you, Mr. Baith, for signing these autographs. Like I said, if you guys want to see the footage of him hitting that home run, definitely click below in the links, and we will go from there. So the next one is postmarked from another obscure major leaguer from the 1980s. And this one is from Oklahoma, and it is former outfielder of the California Angels, Mark Ryle, on three cards, three different cards. I want to say I included an extra 87 Donruss and he decided to keep it, which is fine. So that's why I always include, you know, duplicates sometimes if guys want to keep them for themselves. I'm more than happy to give one to them. 
Let me tell you about Mark Ryle and his career in baseball. Mark Ryle, an Oklahoma native, attended high school in Oklahoma and was drafted by the Kansas City Royals in the third round of the 1978 draft. He signed with the Royals and at just 17 years old he was assigned to their rookie ball affiliate where he appeared in 17 games that year. In 1979 he moved up to single A where he appeared in 107 games for the Royals and then in 1980 he repeated another year in single A where he appeared in 123 games. In 1981, he would split the year between double-A AA and triple-A, appearing in 129 games, posting a 265 batting average, stealing 14 bases, and hitting 14 home runs. Well, the next year in 1982, he would be in triple-A for the Royals, and he posted a 285 batting average for the Royals that year in 129 games, and hit 20 home runs. Well, the Royals rewarded him with a September 7th call-up in 1982, where he would finish out the year in six games for the Royals in the Major Leagues. The following year, however, he would be sent back down to AAA, where he would appear in 132 games, posting a 260 batting average. In 1984, more of the same, he would not get a call-up to the Majors, and he would spend the entire year in AAA for the Royals. Well, concluding after the 1984 season, he was released by the Royals, and Mark decided to sign with the Chicago White Sox. He would spend the bulk of the 1985 season, 106 games with the White Sox AAA, but he did get up to the big club for 12 games. After the 85 season with the White Sox, he would sign with the California Angels in 1986, and he would be assigned to their AAA affiliate where he appeared 127 games, but he would be called up to the majors for 13 outings with the California Angels where he actually batted 375 in his brief tenure in 13 games in California in 1986. Well the following year uh, again he spent 16 games in AAA but he got to spend 58 games as a platoon player for the California Angels in 1987 appearing in 58 games. One of the most notable things that happened for Mark Ryle which is something that is super rare in baseball is on September 4th, 1987, Mark did something very rare. Mark took the field as a shortstop for the California Angels. Well, this is significant because Mark is a left-handed hitter. Very rarely do you see somebody playing the position of shortstop that is a left-handed throwing player. He is only five left-handed individuals to ever have appeared at the position of shortstop in a Major League Baseball game. Despite his lefty Shortstop playing, the Angels decided to let him go from his contract right before spring training concluded in 1988. He stayed unemployed for about a month and then signed a minor league contract in 1988 with the Cardinals where he spent the entire 1988 season in their AAA affiliate. The Cardinals let him go after that season and he signed with the Philadelphia Phillies where he would split the time in 59 games for the Phillies AAA affiliate and then 29 games in the majors. In 1990 he would then sign with the Pirates AAA affiliate where he would appear in 109 games but nine games in the majors with the Pirates. After his time with the Pirates he would then sign to go play overseas in Japan for the Junichi Dragons from 1991 to 92 and he would also have a brief stint in the Texas Rangers organization before hanging up his cleats finally from baseball. Well, after his playing career, Ryle would actually transition to being a coach. And he wasn't just a baseball coach, he actually got into coaching in women's softball. After his playing career, he became a coach at a high school in Oklahoma. And then he became a coach at a small college in Oklahoma. And then he went to become an assistant coach at the University of Auburn from 2009 to 2013. From there, he moved back to... Oklahoma, where he coached at a high school for a season, and then he took a couple assistant coach positions around the country, and then he became the head coach at Midwestern State University in Texas in 2017 as their interim coach. It says he was their coach through 2021, so I'm not sure if he's still coaching with Midwestern State or not, so we'll move on to the next one. All right, so this final one is postmarked from a unique individual, and I say unique in the fact that this individual played his entire major league career from start to finish, or professional career, with the same franchise, 
which is a very rare thing in today's game. And I am talking about former Milwaukee Brewers pitcher Bill Wegman on two of two. Well, also this awesome 1989 upper deck where he's just chilling in the stands. So let me tell you about Bill Wegman and his career in baseball. Bill Wegman grew up and attended high school in Cincinnati, Ohio. He was selected in the 1981 draft in the fifth round by the Milwaukee Brewers. At 18 years old, Wegman was assigned to the Brewers Rookie Ball affiliate where he appeared in 14 games. The following year, 1982, he would appear in 25 games as a starter and post a 12-6 record with a minuscule 2.81 ERA. 1983 would be repeated the same in single A, where he would post a 16-5 record now with a 1.30 ERA in 24 games. The next year, 1984, he would split time between double A AA and triple A, posting a 4-8 record with a 2.45 ERA. In 1985, he would be tested at AAA, where he responded with 10 wins and 11 losses and 28 starts. At the end of the 1985 season, he got a September call-up to the Milwaukee Brewers and never looked back. He had three starts with Milwaukee, and in three games, he posted a 2-0 record with a 3.57 ERA. The following year, in 1986, he became a starter on the Milwaukee Brewers rotation, where he appeared in 32 games as a starter and posted a 5 and 12 record. In 1987, he continued to be a starter in the rotation for the Brewers, posting a 12 and 11 a record in 87 and in 1988 a 13 and 13 record. By 1989, Bill was having a few issues uh, with some injuries, so he transitioned slowly to becoming a spot reliever start, starter type. In 1990, he still was battling some issues, but bounced back in 1991, where he was a full-time starter again, and he posted the best year of his career, posting a 15-7 and record, and 28 games started with a 2.84 ERA. 1992, however, he posted a 13-14 and record, but his ERA was still down with 3.20 and 35 starts. 1993, however, the wheels kind of fell off, and he posted just 4 wins and 14 losses in 1993, and 18 games started that season. In 1994, he would bounce back, and he would turn his uh, record around to an 8-4 and four record in 19 starts. His final year, 1995, Bill transitioned to the bullpen. He appeared in 37 games, posting a 5-7 and seven record with the Brewers that year at the age of 32. Well, after that 1995 season, Bill decided to retire from baseball as a player. He appeared in 11 seasons for the Milwaukee Brewers in his career, posting a 81-90 and 90 record. He appeared in 262 games, starting 216 of those, with a 4.16 ERA. Bill is one of those rare players that played his entire career for one organization, from draft till end. And I'm thinking about doing a video on individuals like Bill, you know, of a list of all the players that have played for one organization throughout their career. That might be something I kick around for a good idea. I also want to mention that Bill included a testimonial sheet with the cards that he signed for me uh, discussing his relationship with God asking me to please read which I definitely will I'm not going to read it on camera to you guys but uh, uh, I want to thank Bill for signing I also want to thank Mr. Ryle for signing as well I did not realize that he was a women's softball coach with the, which I think is absolutely cool I also want to thank Mr. Bill Bathe for taking the time to sign and like I said uh, I'm going to post his video of him hitting that home run in the World Series for the Giants in 1989 against his former team. I hope you learned a little bit about some players that you may not have been aware of in this episode. I look forward to your comments below, and as always, happy collecting.